Over on God Awful Movies, we've been reviewing Mormon movies this month, and there's a moment in one of them that's been stuck in my head ever since I saw it a couple weeks ago. The movie was called Witnesses, and it's a historical drama portraying the apologist version of Mormon history through the eyes of the famed three witnesses. So quick bit of history that you probably already know here. Mormonism was founded when Joseph Smith claimed that an angel gave him a set of golden plates with a new and improved Bible on it, and that's what he translated to create the Book of Mormon. And famously, the angel forbade anyone but him from actually looking at the golden plates. So, you know, it was like uh, eight-year-old Noah's ability to fly in that way. Of course, to counteract the obvious criticism that that sounds like the kind of lie an eight-year-old would tell, when you crack open the Book of Mormon, one of the first things that you see is an account of the three witnesses, fathers of the original church who actually got to see the plates before the translation was over. Now, what the book does its best to underemphasize is that none of these three witnesses even claim to have seen the plates physically. They saw them spiritually. Instead of Joseph just pulling back the cover and showing him the physical plates that he claimed to already have, he took them out in the forest and he prayed that God would show them the plates in a holy vision, which is even better than seeing it with your eyes, if you, if you think about it. So anyway, so in the movie, we reach this point, right? The point of quintessential bullshit. Our various characters go out into the woods. They get on their knees. They do the least interesting thing four men in the woods can do on their knees, which is pray. Right. We have this moment of dramatic tension where the filmmaker tries to do the will they won't they thing. But, you know, with God and, and, and they see their holy vision, an angel appears before them, bathed in a white, brilliant glow, proffering a golden Bible that sparkles in the blinding light. But we don't see that. We see them see that. And that's the point that I've been meandering towards this whole time. What we see is the characters looking awed, moved almost to tears, and then being bathed in a punishingly bright light. And sure, part of that is because of some ill-defined sense of sacrilege, right? And, and sure, some of it is the fact that Mormon movies have a four-figure budget, but at least some of it, and possibly most of it, is because there's literally no way to actually show us this part of the story without us reflecting on how stupid it is. I'd submit that if you gave an infinite budget to the most talented filmmaker in the history of the medium, they could not give you back a scene of an angel from heaven holding out a golden Bible going, eh, without making it look silly. I mean, set aside the historically accurate eyeball monster angel here. Just picture the actual thing that Joseph Smith and his con artist buddies had in mind when they agreed to this lie in the first place. You put that on screen, and even the most devout Mormon is going to look at it, and rather than feeling reverence, they're going to go, you know, this whole story kind of seems silly. And this is actually something we see quite a bit on God Awful Movies. It could almost be a square on our bingo card. Movie avoids showing you thing religion actually says because it would look silly as hell. I mean, modern Christian movies are mostly written in ways that, you know, God appears only as an inaudible hum in the background who, you know, fixes plane reservations or coffee machines with really auspicious timing or shit like that. But but when they try to do stuff out of the Bible or bring their based on a true story miracle shit to life, they often have to hide the dumbest parts behind a curtain. We don't usually see the scorpion horse locusts in the rapture movie. Right? Like imagine you're making a story, you're making the Samson and Delilah movie. Right? You get to the part where Samson's supposed to have to kill a thousand men with a donkey jaw. Don't get me wrong. I don't doubt that a good filmmaker could make an awesome scene of that. I loved that first action sequence in RRR, but it didn't strike me as historically accurate. There would be no way to watch that happen without going, okay, well, at least this part of the Bible's bullshit. But what a filmmaker would do instead, right, is they'd, like, they'd have two guys sitting at a bar talking about that crazy massacre yesterday where Samson killed a thousand men with a donkey jaw. Or maybe you'd see the Philistine army rushing towards him and you'd see him grab the donkey jaw and he'd rush towards them and you'd hear some clashing off camera and then you'd you know, like pan over the pile of bodies and show Samson standing all bloody and victorious amid them. But even in that case, right? Like even if you did that, you wouldn't show him standing amid a thousand corpses because even that would be enough for us to be going like, okay, yeah, that's nonsense. This is hardly a uniquely Christian problem. Nowhere is it more glaring than when we watch Hindu movies, but we've seen this shit in Jewish movies, Muslim movies, and even the ones from that weird Japanese cult that make all the animes that Eli makes us watch. When you hear a story, you can corral your mind's eye enough to swerve around the silliest parts, right? But when you have to actually stare it in the face, the mendacity is unavoidable. 
Now think about what that means for a second. Because what is a movie but an imagining? Right? Films are our imaginations rendered and in a shareable form. Which means you can't even actually imagine this shit without highlighting what obvious fiction it is. Religion stories are quite literally unimaginably stupid. <laughs> 